Hello, everybody. Zach Couples, physical therapist here. And folks, if you are someone who has a push-up that's kind of meh, or you're struggling with any type of weight-bearing exercises with your upper body, or maybe you're just tight all up in this upper body business and you've stretched till you're blue in the face and you're like, yeah, nothing's working. What should I do? Well, folks, your boy, Notorious ZAC, has got a drill for you. Enter the quadruped hold. Yes, folks, quadruped is one of those fundamental positions that I teach a lot of my Supreme clientele in order to prep them to perform upper body weight bearing exercises effectively. If movement was music, quadruped is kind of like learning the musical scales on your way to bossing up playing stairway to push up heaven if you know what i'm sizzling so today's video we're going to go into the biomechanics of the quadruped hold we're going to go into when in the heck should you use this where does it fit in your training and rehabilitation plans and lastly and most importantly how in the heck do you perform this move so you get the most out of it and what are some common ways to deal with some of the compensatory actions that we may see when we're teaching someone or ourselves quadruped. Let's dive in, shall we? First, it's nerd time. We're going to dive into quadruped biomechanics. You might be thinking, Zach, we're on freaking hands and knees. How complicated do we have to make this activity? And I get it. Quadruped hold doesn't seem like it's doing a whole lot, but if you can truly grasp the biomechanics behind this activity, it's really gonna up your upper body weight bearing activity game. You're also gonna know how to better coach this kind of stuff, and it's going to allow you to better know when you should or should not program it. You're gonna be like a coaching triple threat, kind of like a movement Michael Jordan. But yo, hey, if you wanna be like a Bob biomechanics don't matter, I can only dribble with my right hand koozie kind of guy, more power to you. I'll see you later. So in order to understand the biomechanics, we first have to describe the quadruped position and what types of things are going on at the respective joints. We'll work from the bottom up with this activity. The ankles are going to be in a relatively plantar flex or dorsiflex position. Plantar flex is generally a little more comfortable. The pelvis, thorax, and head are all lined up atop one another stacked you might say yes you can talk to me the hips will be flexed to 90 degrees the arms are going to be in about 90 degrees of shoulder flexion and your upper cervical spine ought to be extended based on the rotational actions that occur at 90 degrees of hip and shoulder flexion respectively we can say that the quadruped position has an internal rotation bias about it and here's the cool thing you're going to be breathing during performance of this activity. And the cool thing that breathing does is the oscillating airflow as you inhale and exhale is going to create movement in the rib cage. It's going to create visceral movement because your pelvis is kind of moving all which ways. So that's going to help increase particular ranges of motion throughout the body. In particular, because we are talking about an internal rotation biased activity based on the joint angles, if you do the quadruped hold savagely well, you are likely going to increase your available internal rotation range of motion. How cool is that? Also, there's this really cool article by Takashima et al., which I'll link in the show notes, which will be found on zackcouples.com forward slash quadruped dash hold. But in this article, they demonstrated that the supine position lying on your back increases the lateral dimensions of the rib cage. Folks, quadruped is basically like supine, but you're flipped the other side. So it reasons to believe that in the quadruped position, you're likely going to increase lateral rib cage expansion. And that has to happen every time you breathe in. So if you have someone who has a difficult time with that portion of breathing, maybe there's someone who's got a slender body type, narrow infrasternal angle for you, you nerds. Um, if you see someone like that, this could be a prime exercise to incorporate into their program. What could be some of the assessment findings that we might see for someone that would think, huh, this might be a good activity to give them? Well, I'll tell you. Basically, any internal rotation deficit Quadruped's got its name written all over that person. So you're going to see loss of shoulder, internal rotation, adduction, potentially flexion. All of those measures might implicate, hey, quadruped could be a good move. 
Same thing in the hips. If I have a loss of IR, adduction, and flexion in the hips, I'm thinking quadruped. And lastly, as I had mentioned before, if you see someone who's got a narrow infrasternal angle where the medial margins of their ribs are more vertically oriented, this is a prime exercise to program for these supreme clientele. Now, folks, there is a caveat to programming this specific activity. If you can get to 90 degrees of shoulder and hip flexion, it presupposes that you have all of the range of motion leading up to that point without having any compensatory actions. For example, if someone's got a loss of hip flexion, that's let's say maybe they only got 60 degrees of hip flexion, or when you go to test shoulder flexion, they can't even get to their side, which would indicate a loss of shoulder flexion, those individuals may have a deficit in external rotation-based measures. And then when you get them into the 90 degree hip and shoulder flexion, they might do something wonky and that might lead to uh, this move being less effective for those folks. This is especially true, and we'll talk about this later, but if you ever see someone who's got a lot of scapular winging, maybe it looks like the thorax is falling really far forward towards the ground, or if you got someone who's got a whole lot of wrist discomfort and you've tried coaching this up as best as you possibly can, it may be that they have a loss of external rotation and you probably want to do some things to address that external rotation loss. But folks, answering that question is for another day or it's in another post. Where does the quadruped hold fit in the programming continuum? In my eyes, quadruped is like level 1.5, level 2 in your push-up progression because it shares a lot of the same torso and arm positions that you would have within a push-up. So if you have a hard time getting good thorax and, and arm position in quadruped, well, push-up's likely going to be miserable. And so you want to make sure that quadruped is pretty dang solid before you go gangbusters on some type of weight-bearing exercise like a push-up. And the reason why quadruped is a bit easier than a push-up is because there's more body points contacting the ground, there's less body weight going through the upper body, and it's more evenly distributed between your arms and your legs. Lastly, we're going to be doing an isometric hold with the quadruped exercise. Whereas a push-up is more isotonic, meaning that you're going through a full range of motion as opposed to holding position. And that's pretty much all the nitty gritty that you need to know about the quadruped hold. Now let's go into my favorite part, which is how to perform this activity like a frickin' rock star. For that, we're gonna have to head to Elevate right now. Now we're gonna go over how to perform the quadruped hold like a boss. Here's what pretty rock solid looks like. I'm gonna show you in full and then we'll break it down step by step. Here. I'd say that was pretty good. Let's break down each of the steps needed to perform quadruped well. First place I'm gonna look at is the pelvis. And what I wanna do with that is I'm gonna usually start everyone with a sagged position, so I want everything to go down. It'll make sense why when you see all the ways that people can screw up this activity. And then from here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tuck my hips. Now the way I want the tuck to be cued is generally there's like one to three ways that's gonna work for most people. One good cue is thinking about pulling the back pockets down towards the heels. Another cue you can use is just making the tailbone as long as possible. And the third cue that I really like is just gently pushing the kneecaps into the ground. If you have someone who tends to be an over tucker, that's a great cue for them. So that's the pelvic component. The next component is the arm component. What I want people to do when they're performing the reach is I want them to put weight through the pisiform. And what the pisiform is, is it's this wiggly bone that's on your uh, inside of the wrist, opposite of the thumb. This bone right here, you got a little wiggly bone right in front of your uh, hand like that. That's the pisiform. And it's here that we want to put weight in our pressure distribution when we're doing any type of weight bearing activity. And so when I do quadruped, I'm going to cue a little bit of pressure into that, keeping my hand fully flat. And what you want to do from that point is you want to keep your chest parallel to the ground 
you're gonna reach your arms long and slow like this, pushing through those points. My elbows are gonna be pointed slightly towards my thighs. They're not gonna be flared out, just towards the thighs like that. And you're gonna reach long, just like so. Once you're in this position, make sure you're looking up a little bit towards the horizon, not like crazy, just like right there. And you're gonna hold this position and breathe. Here's how I want the breathing. It's gonna be silent in through the nose with your mouth closed. The exhale is a very long, slow, and drawn out through the mouth. And as I exhale, I'm gonna maintain position. I'm gonna to continue to push through the pisiform bone. I'm gonna press through the kneecaps and make sure I never sag. Just like that. Now folks, it looks seemingly easy, but there are so many ways that people can screw this up. I'm gonna break it down for you step by step. Let's first go through pelvic compensation. Most people, when they do the tucking portion is one, they won't do it, so they'll be kind of sag like this. That's usually just reinforced by giving one of those three cues, whether it's tailbone long, pushing the kneecaps, whatever. But the other one that's just as common is the over tucker. And what they do is they end up going, wachow, how's that look right there? Terrible in my eyes, but you're not gonna tell that to your Supreme clientele, be nice to them. But when you do the wachow over tuck, you're ending up using a lot of rectus, damn near killed us, abdominis. That's gonna limit how much range of motion gain and expansion that we can get in the upper part of our body and the pelvis for that matter. So I don't want this crazy turtle shell over tuck action going on. The solution to that typically is to, again, coach them on a very subtle tuck, but if there's still someone who they just can't differentiate pelvis and low back, I oftentimes will not even cue the tuck and I'll just have them get a little bit of kneecap pressure. And that seems to work pretty dang well. So those would be the key things that I see with the pelvis. Now, way more screw ups happen with the reach. So I'm gonna break them down for you step by step. The most common one that I see that is fairly easily fixed is the person who gets a little overzealous with the reach and they go, hey coach, check my reach, wow, I got it. No, you don't. A lot of times when you get the person who goes really, really fast into the position, they'll sometimes whip their head back and you'll see a lot of upper cervical flexion. Both of those are gonna limit the range of motion gains that you can acquire with this move in the upper body. And the reason why that is, is because if I'm using a lot of force to get in position, I'm creating more muscle activity. And that's gonna limit the range of motion capabilities that I can acquire. Also, if I'm doing cervical flexion, which is another common screw up that is often associated with the person who reaches fast, well, that's gonna close off the upper airway. It's gonna limit how much gas exchange you're gonna be able to create, which is gonna impede your range of motion gains that you will so desire. So you wanna make sure that they go super slow. Tell them to go slow motion, like they're in uh, the matrix. Of course, the old ones, because they're better but nice and slow on the reach and subtle, that usually fixes that. If you still notice that they're trying to create the reach with their neck somehow, I would cue them to untuck their chin, look up a little bit with their eyes to the horizon and move slow. Those will often fix those very common screw ups that you'll see with this particular move. Now that's the most common reach ailment that you'll be able to fix with just those cues. But there's a few others that are a little more challenging. The first one that I wanna go over is the, uh, the turtle reacher. And the turtle reacher is often paired with the over tucker. What they're gonna do is they're gonna bend the sternum and they're gonna go, hey, how's this look? And they're gonna look like a turtle shell. Folks, I love me some Ninja Turtles, but I do not love me the turtle shell when it comes to quadruped holds. And the reason why that is is because if I'm crunching like this, it's gonna limit how much expansion and range of motion changes I'll be able to get in the front of the chest. That's going to negatively impact your ability to get internal rotation, AKA not cool. So we wanna to try to make this cool. A lot of times you can fix that by encouraging the chest to be parallel and moving nice and slow, just like that. 
Now, that doesn't work for everyone, of course. So I'm gonna show you some other variations that you could do with quadruped holes to see if that improves. One easy one, if the slow reach doesn't work, is you could also go with a slightly wider stance. So when I do the wider stance, what I'm doing is instead of having my hands and shoulders stacked atop one another, I might go just a little wider than uh, shoulder width apart. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it harder for me to engage my pecs on the reach, just like that. I still wanna make sure that I'm pushing through the inside of the, uh, of the, of the hand, so that pisiform bone, but one of the muscles that causes the turtle shell activity is using the pecs to complete the reach. Because the pecs are adductors, if I abduct my hands, it's harder for them to contract. And sometimes that can work really well. Now I'll show you some other tweaks that you could potentially make to this move, but I first wanna go over the other common screw up that I'll see. Because in either of these screw ups, the person who over tucks or the one that I'm about to show you, the solutions can often be the same. Now, let's go into the other common screw up that you'll see on the reaching portion. And that's the person who just stays sagged and they can't get a full reach. They're like, eh, I'm trying, how's it look? Not too great. So we're gonna see if we can fix that with those particular individuals. Specific to that population, one tweak that you can do is just simply manually assist them to get into position. Now, if you're working with a female, you're not gonna put your hands on their chest. Rule number one, don't get sued. But you, you could simply just put a manual cue in the upper back, say, hey, push, 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 and see if that helps. But if that doesn't help, then you probably gotta phone in some friends to help with this particular activity. And the first friend that I'm going to call for either the person who can't reach enough or the turtle shell is some wedges. I'm gonna use these uh, squat wedges that are made by my boy Eric. Link in the description below if you wanna get yourself some. But what you're gonna do with the wedges is you're still gonna um, get the same hand cue that you had with the other variations. It just makes it a little bit easier. And the reason why the wedges make it easier is because your wrist is in a more flexed position. If your wrist is in more of a flexed position, that promotes more external rotation through the arm. External rotation through the arm is gonna lift the medial border of the scapula, so the inner portion of your shoulder blades, slightly off the rib cage. And what that does, folks, is that's gonna promote and make it easier for you to push air into the upper back. Now, you're not gonna force it just by doing the cues the way I'm showing you how to do it is gonna help encourage air into that area. And if I can push more air into the upper part of the back, that helps fill the, the, the uh, rib cage into the scapula, because your scapula is rounded just like this. Breathing and pushing the ribs backwards will help fill that, so that way you're not the person who sags too much or the person who crunches too much. Wedges can work really well in that regard. It's also a nice uh, tool to use if you're someone who gets a lot of wrist discomfort when you're in the quadruped position. So I'm gonna do the same cues, tailbone long, a little bit of kneecap pressure, nice slow reach, check out the horizon, breathe. Now folks, sometimes the wedges aren't enough. Maybe the position that you're using is still too challenging for a person to get a full reach or they're cheating by doing the turtle shell. What do you do then? Simple, you might consider elevating the surface. Yes, folks, elevating the surface can be a very easy way to help someone who tends to be crunching too much when they're performing quadruped or they're the person who sags and can't reach. It's just like a push-up. If you got someone whose push-up from the floor is whack, you can make it much easier by having them do so on an inclined surface. The same rules are going to apply to the quadruped hold. And so I'm gonna use my same cues. Tailbone's gonna get long, a little pressure through the kneecaps. I'm pushing through the piece of form, checking out the horizon with my eyes, what's up with that? And breathing.
And then over time, as your Supreme clientele get more better at that, you can remove uh, one of the DC blocks, make it a little easier or whatever surface you're using, eventually working them to the ground. Now here's an interesting tidbit with, um, especially the person who has that tendency to sag. Sometimes they might be freaky strong. They might be able to get enough of a reach to get in position, but they just lack the excursion in their upper back for whatever reason. Another way that you can facilitate a good quadruped position with these particular individuals is by doing an offset version. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna induce a little bit of rotation in the upper thorax. If I rotate, that might create enough of a position change or a shape change in my upper body to encourage my ability to create more range of motion and expansion in the upper back. So with that, the cues are the same. I'm just gonna put one hand on an elevated surface. Tailbone long, get the kneecaps, nice easy reach. Just breathe like your Faith Hill. And those are some common ways that you can tweak the quadruped hold to get more out of it, especially if you're someone who deals with some of those screw ups that we see and you're doing your best efforts to coach them out of that into a better position, you just can't. And that folks is just about everything you need to know for the quadruped hold. To summarize, quadruped hold is a great precursor activity for any upper body weight bearing exercise. It has an internal rotation bias about it. So if you have any internal rotation deficits, it's money for that. The major keys when you're performing this quadruped exercise is you gotta make sure you got a slight tuck, good pelvic positioning. You're getting a full reach that's keeping the chest parallel to the ground. Your head's in a good position with the chin untucked and you're getting full respiratory cycles that aren't creating a lot of tension, but are maximizing range of motion so you can be an absolute upper body rock star. If you like this type of stuff and you wanna learn more, go ahead and check me out at zackcouples.com. And while you're checking out the video, why don't you go ahead and hit the like, subscribe button, and everything else that you need to keep the fam growing. Otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in. You've been an incredible, outstanding audience, and I hope that you keep it real, but not to the extent where things go wrong. Stay hungry, stay learning, stay moving, and I'll see you next time. Deuces.